I mean, isn't he meant to be running the country? Uh, isn't he meant to be the leader of the free world? I mean, it's it's an awful shame that an entire week had to be taken up just prepping for this 90 minute debate. Um, he was obviously not on good form, as all of his sycophants have had to keep pointing out. The problem is, is that they have this they have this line they've been doing for the last week, which is, you know, he had a bad night. Well, yes, but the evidence seems to be that he has a lot of bad nights and a lot of bad days. And uh, their attempt, the, 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 the sort of Biden court's attempt to pass this off as unusual simply isn't credible. I, I don't think it's going to wash at all. Political commentator Douglas Murray recently shared his unfiltered insights following Joe Biden's disastrous debate against Donald Trump. Murray criticizes the excuses put forward by the Democrats to explain the president's poor performance. Unfortunately, it appears that not only the Democrats, but also the media are quite defensive about Biden's capabilities. Let's take a look at what Murray has to say regarding this. Douglas, how much culpability does the media have for hiding President Biden's I would say, fairly obvious cognitive decline. Uh, it's extraordinary, Rita. I watched the debate uh, last uh, Thursday night, and I watched the aftermath of the debate, the, the roundup and analysis um, on basically on CNN and MSNBC. What struck me about CNN in particular was absolutely everybody in the studio was talking suddenly as, well, anyone at Fox has for the last few years, anyone at the yeah. New York Post has for the last few years, uh, for which they've all been castigated. Um, it, it was so strange seeing these CNN pundits suddenly switch as if they'd learned something in the previous 90 minutes that had, that had previously been a mystery to them, a completely hidden secret, a, a hidden fact. How can they how can they hold their heads up and still behave like this? These were all people who knew and could see everything you and I could know and see, but they decided not to observe it and in actual fact to kick over the traces and to attack anyone who did observe it. And here we are, here they are, with the candidate that they want to use to get Donald Trump away from the White House. And they're only now realizing that their candidate has flaws. I mean, it starts to make you wonder how serious they actually are. And, you know, when they do all this kind of Donald Trump is an existential threat to democracy sort of thing, you think, well, if you really thought that, would you really be running Joe Biden against that man? Wouldn't you have done everything you could to get the most talented team of upcoming, likable, capable uh, young Democrats or middle-aged Democrats. It doesn't matter. Uh, mm. But they didn't. And by the way, this line about, you know, Donald Trump using uh, the law against his political opponents, that kind of stuff would sit a lot better with uh, a lot of American voters <laughs> if they weren't seeing the former president, Donald Trump, being repeatedly put on trial for things that are clearly politically motivated. As always, Murray is on point regarding the issue at hand. Truly, if a group of people strongly oppose the idea of Trump winning the presidency, why would they support someone who seems much less capable? Why wouldn't they seek the most capable individual they could find? Regarding presidential responsibilities, Murray also has specific actions he hopes the next president will take regarding the long-standing Hamas issue. Let's listen to his explanation. Now, what I worry about most with what we saw from the president uh, is, is the weakness that the Biden administration exudes and what that means for America, what that means for the world. Uh, particularly when you look at the West's enemies, uh, we are in a period of heightened vulnerability with the likes of Iran, Russia, China, knowing there's a few more months of this chaos in the White House uh, how do you see that? Because we, we do have conflict around the world. And you made the point recently that if the, if America was more respected, if the Biden White House was feared, we possibly wouldn't have American hostages still in Gaza or have a Wall Street journalist, uh, a Wall Street Journal journalist uh, in, a, in a prison in Russia. Oh, that's absolutely right, Rita. I, I'm I'm uh, amazed that there isn't more um, outrage, really, in America 
that an American reporter can be snatched in Moscow and held hostage, mm. but still more than 100 Israelis uh, are hostage in Gaza, um, including five or six Americans. Um, I, I can't understand. I mean, the, the, the Thai government got their hostages out from Gaza through some weird deal. Seemed that Hamas feared the Thai government or their connections more than they fear uh, the US of A. I, I think this is, by the way, I think this is a very, very important thing for Donald Trump to run on, uh, which is that there's a situation that has emerged much like 7980 with the Carter Reagan uh, 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 election. Let flip. Because if you remember, the Iranian ho hostage situation of American hostages in Iran was a drumbeat in the election process. And Reagan really soared in those days as he as he made it clear that if he got into office, the hostages would be released. And lo and behold, Carter was mm. chucked out. Reagan came in and the hostages were released. I'd like to see Donald Trump do something similar. You know, he can easily stand on that stage and say to Qatar, Iran, Hamas, I know you're listening. I know you're listening. You better keep the hostages. You you either make sure you return them, return them the day I get into office. You better have them in perfect condition or else. And I would like to see that uh, from President Trump. I'd like to see that from any potential leader of the free world. And I think it's shocking uh, that Biden and his administration have spent so little energy on this. And clearly, one of the reasons is that the president himself has no energy. He does take naps in the middle of the day. He is only functioning, it seems, for about five or six hours a day by the admission of his own officials. That's one reason why America is failing on the global stage. Murray believes that the Biden administration failed to address this issue properly and hopes that the next president will be more responsive. That said, it is clear that he does not see Biden winning the coming election, a sentiment shared by many. However, many also believe that Vice President Kamala Harris would be a strong contender for the presidency, a view with which he strongly disagrees. Watch closely as he explains why. I mean, this is fanciful stuff. Uh, let me put it this way. Mm. Do you really believe, does anyone really believe that three years from now, Joe Biden is going to be in the Oval Office, is going to be able to be there, is going to be functioning as the US president. I really don't think anyone does. So at the moment, you're right. I mean, the, the White House press secretary and others have sort of started to mention Kamala Harris. But they do so, of course, knowing that her approval ratings are even worse than Joe <laughs> Biden's, much worse than Joe Biden's. Um, her likability is, is through down the toilet. And, uh, you know, this is a very interesting, it's not just about these personalities, it's also about the way in which politics is done now in America. You know, it's not rude, it is simply the fact that Kamala was a, div a, a diversity hire, because oh. Joe Biden said he wanted a black woman as his running mate. That means that instead of being able to choose from all of the talent in America, he could only choose from the talent within 7% of the population in America. And, you know, as I always say, if you live by DEI, you'll die by DEI, because now they have this hugely unpopular figure, the vice president, who has no meaningful achievements to her name in her years in office. Everything she's been tasked with, like the border, has not got better under her management. Uh, far from it. And here you have this person who they now cannot pass over because of the, uh, their own rules that they have invented and decided to play by. So... I, I, I mean, you know, it's it's not my concern, as it were, to to advise the Democrat Party, but I, I would just say, you know, it's clear that Joe's not going to make it. It's clear that Kamala will would would lose to anyone, anyone. Mm. What are they going to do if they're going to do a switch out? They're going to have to do it soon because there's going to be somebody, whether it was Kamala, Gavin Newsom, whoever, they are going to have to introduce this person uh, to the public very, very fast. And they don't have a day to lose, in my view. Do you agree with Murray's opinions? Share your thoughts in the comment section below. Thank you for joining us in another insightful discussion with Douglas Murray. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon for more thought-provoking discussions. Stay tuned for our next video as we explore today's most critical issues.